Okay. Um, I'm Zoe from Zoe's Fancy Cakes. If you haven't seen my videos before, I do run a lot of different sort of classes and cake decorating tutorials, face-to-face -face and YouTube and online. And um, the other day I made a little hippo and I thought it'd be nice to make it into a cake. I, I ran out of time the other day, that's why it didn't end up being a cake. I thought the topper was gonna be quicker. So today I thought it'd be nice to do a cake. Um, what I did was I didn't bake especially for you, so I apologize guys. I had a look in the freezer at spare ones that I've done. Basically when I when I bake a cake, I'm really bad at getting the quantities right. So I always make too much batter. And then what I do is with the batter that's left, I just kind of pour it into really small cake tins and I put them in the freezer and then I get them out and use them for bits and pieces like this. So today we've got some kind of random shaped ones. Um, one that was in, this was like one of the little small doll cake tins. Um, and then this one was just, I haven't even leveled it off or anything, but you'll see later that we don't really need to for this. This one was just one of the little small four inch tins. Again, it was just a tiny bit of mix that I had left. And when I'd done with it, I just put it in the freezer and waited for an occasion like this to get it out. Um, also, this is just a bit of a cake card. So it's a fairly thin cake card. And I know it looks like a really random shape. What I was thinking was, I was wanting to do a hippo so it looked like it was coming out of the water. So I took my two bits of cake and we're going to kind of push them together. We'll do a little bit of carving, but not too much because if I can avoid doing the carving, um, it usually means slightly less cake crumbs everywhere. Um, there'll still be some mess because I always make a mess. So this was just a big round cake card. I think it was probably maybe about a 10 inch one or something. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I cut it into almost like a number eight shape, but with enough space for the small one to fit on here and the slightly bigger one to sit on this side. And my plan is for the bigger side to be like the hippo's nose and then the smaller bit to be like the top of its head. We'll see how it works. And I'll just move my stuff over here now. It's really cold in the room that I'm in, so my filling has kind of firmed up a bit. In fact, this, I, um, I couldn't decide today whether I wanted to use ganache or buttercream. I, I change my mind frequently. Usually if I'm doing like wedding cakes and stuff, I always put ganache on the outside and buttercream on the middle. Um, today I couldn't decide. So this is actually my buttercream and ganache mixed together. It was chocolate buttercream and chocolate ganache. That's just Richard closing the door behind me that you can hear. Now I did microwave it just before we came online. So that it'd be nice and soft, but it's so cold in here and it's firmed up again. But what I have done already is it might be a bit firm. We might have to put the microwave on. I'm not sure, we'll see. I kind of cut these into layers already and we've put it in as the filling. Okay, so let's put some on this end as well. It's not perfectly neat. I'm not too worried about this. And if it doesn't come to the very edge of my cake, again, it's not the end of the world. It, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna be underneath this. It's not really gonna be seen. Just gonna place that on there. So I have got them touching as much as I can. Let's just move this to one side. I've got the cake crumbs everywhere already, even though I've only just started. So the big bit's gonna be the nose. I just wanna do a little bit of shaping with it, but not too much. I'm gonna use a little serrated knife. You can just use, covered in buttercream and ganache. Um, you can just use a straight knife, just as long as it's a sharp knife. I like the serrated ones a little bit for carving the cake. Now, these ones are pretty defrosted. I, I took them out of the freezer this morning, but usually what I do is I take them out of the freezer um, if they're fully frozen, maybe like an hour or so before I wanted to carve it. So it's still a little bit firm to make things easier. You don't have to have a frozen cake at all. So if you're finding that you've got a nice fresh cake, but it's a bit soft for carving, just stick it in the freezer maybe for 20 minutes, half an hour, just to start to firm it up. I'm gonna try and cut a little bit off the side here and a tiny bit off this side here as well for the start of my my face so remember this is going to be like the top of the head and this bit's going to be the big nose so i'm going to slope it down a tiny bit here as well and keep hold of these we might even push these in the sides here to just fill the gaps we'll see we'll see in a second what it's going to look like actually it doesn't feel too crumbly this one i apologize for the noise richard is still playing around with one of the cameras um at the side of me and he's the noise is him just moving things around quite a bit now, I'm just trying to decide whether I want it to have cheeks that kind of bulge. So if I want its eyes to come in slightly and its cheeks to come out, what I think I might do is just cut a little bit more off here. So it kind of has a little step. I don't know how well you guys can see that from the top. Yeah. So it kind of steps in here and then up. And let's just do the same on this side. As I probably won't get it perfectly even because I never do. 
<laughs> but close enough <laughs> is okay. So don't worry about it being exactly the same on both sides. Okay, so my nose. Now I'm thinking instead of having it so rounded, I might dip it a tiny bit in the top. Just trying to think, yeah. So I'm gonna just go in from this side and this side to try and get a little bit of a dip. This one actually still feels a little bit frozen. I didn't think it would be, but just a little bit. Yeah, it feels cold to the touch. Okay, so it's still a little bit. And then I think I might dip it inwards here. Again, just a very small amount, not by much. Now, I didn't cut my cake card to match this shape. So what you might find is, and I don't know if you can see it from above, you might start to see a little bit of my cake card here. But I'm not going to worry too much. We might cover it when we put the fondant on. But also, I'm just going to cut a little bit more off, sorry. Um, when we put it on the cake board, I can put some like water around it. So instead of this being the full hippo, I don't know if I even explained fully what I was doing here, did I? You're probably all thinking, what on earth is that? That's like the weirdest shape ever. It is the weirdest shape ever, isn't it, at the moment? Um, I'm going to put it on a board that I've iced blue. Okay. I think, is it about a 12 inch one? You just need to make sure the board is bigger than the cake that you're working on, okay? So you don't have to do it the same size as me. These are only two really small cakes, but at the moment, you know, I'm not making these for people, so it's pointless me making something really big because I'm not gonna see anybody really to, to be dishing out lots of cakes. So nice and small is good for me at the moment. This is the bit I enjoy the least is covering it in like the ganache and the, the covering. So if you just joined us, this is actually a mix of ganache and buttercream together. So you can mix the two together. Um, when I'm doing 3D cakes, sometimes I'll go for ganache, sometimes I'll go for buttercream. It really depends on sort of the speed I have to work at um, and also the shape that I'm doing. Sometimes I want a really firm base to put my fondant onto, so I would go for a ganache. And then sometimes I think, well, actually I want it to be quite pliable underneath because I might not have been able to cut the shape of the cake exactly as I want it. So what I then do is cover it in buttercream because the buttercream doesn't ever really set as hard as ganache. So once the fondant's on, I can kind of press and push the cake um, into slightly different shapes, only like a little bit. So you're not gonna change it from like a circle to a square shape just by putting buttercream underneath. So more things like um, eye sockets and stuff, I can push them in a little bit deeper if it's buttercream, but with ganache, I can't push them deeper because that ganache is set hard. So I'm just giving it a quick once over first and it's very messy at the moment, guys. Very, very messy. I'm just gonna try and put a bit of ganache in that. Watch your head. Sorry, that little gap there. Okay. And like I say, we could even use like tiny bits of cake to fill that. I, I mean, I don't wanna fill it too much. I do want it to look like it's narrow at that point. See, these are such tiny bits of cake that actually if you don't wanna put them on, you don't have to. We could just fill it with ganache or even fondant. I know that sometimes a lot of fondant is too much when you're eating a cake. So we want to keep the bulk of it inside as cake. I'm just going back over that with a bit of ganache or ganache and buttercream mix. I apologize if I keep referring to it as ganache. It is half buttercream, half um, ganache mixed together. So we're going to cover it in fondant. And I pre-mixed some earlier. So I did actually use the colours, but I mixed them together. The blue isn't what's in the hippo colour. The blue is actually what I covered the board with. So just the... So what colour blue is that one? That's the duck egg blue, that one I covered the board in. And then um, I've got the grey and then the teddy bear brown mixed together, but it's also got a little bit of white in. But for the white one, I used the Renshaw as extra, but I wanted to use the marshmallow flavour. I like that one. So we're going to lay it over. Okay. So... I have to be careful when I'm putting it on. Now, if I'd spent much longer as well on the ganache, we'd get a much smoother surface. I'm using my hands. I have washed my hands, I promise, guys. Um, gently, really gently, kind of press it into where the dip was in the middle. Okay, I should have probably given my fingernails a little cut. Okay. Anywhere we start to get kind of crease in, it's not much of a crease, but it's fine. We're gonna press down like this. So this is probably a little bit thicker than I would normally roll it out, but it's my fault for not kind of making it soft. The temperature of the room really does make a difference to your paste. When it's quite warm, it's very soft, and because it's so cold in here, it's pretty firm. Also, because I've put a bit of Renshaw's extra in, it's a much firmer fondant, or sugar paste, I should say, 
I realize I confuse people a lot when I talk about fondant and sugar paste. So fondant, I think, is usually the word that Americans use for the sugar paste, whereas in England, it's actually sugar paste. But I do refer to it as fondant, so I probably confuse everyone. So I apologize now. In well, advance, French but... call it ready to roll icing. Yes, ready to roll icing with, with French shorts, yeah. The important bit is to press it quite firmly around the edge at the bottom. Because quite often what happens is if you haven't pressed it in far enough to the bottom of your cake, when you cut the bottom of your cake, suddenly the edge of your um, sugar paste is halfway up your cake and you've got a gap at the bottom where your uh, cake is exposed. So really push it in. And I'm just cutting around the edge with my knife. If I end up with a little bit on this design, I've got all the chocolate I've got in there, that um, kind of exposes the cake a little bit, when I make him look like he's in water, I'm going to be able to kind of cover and hide that. So again, I'm not overly panicked with this one if I don't get a really neat edge. I would spend a lot longer working on sort of bottom edge if, if we wanted to have a really clean, clean cut. I mean, don't aim for it to be messy, but don't overly panic if it's not perfect. You can see actually that the fondant's just a little bit thick. I should have spent longer working on rolling that out. So if your cake hasn't dried too much and you want to dip it in further, you should be able to put a little bit of pressure on. So again, I should really have used this. There we go. To just press in. So if I want a bit more of a dip and it's now is just here. Does that show okay for you guys? I'm not sure if you can see it very well or not. Look. Richard's answering for you all. <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking I might actually want to push it in a little bit more here where I want his eyes to kind of go as well. I'm just going to use my finger, so I'm going to press, sorry, I'm going to press in a little bit here. Again, you can use this. Okay. You are okay to use your fingers, just make sure you have got nice clean hands. And you can, of course, put food safe gloves on. Um, I feel like I can't feel what I'm doing when I wear the gloves, so that's why I'm not wearing the gloves, but my hands are clean, I promise. Okay, so I'm gonna put its eyes in here. Oops, caught my finger now. And um, we're gonna put some little nostrils in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll stick two pieces on as extra pieces, see what they look like, because they're easy for me to remove if I don't like it. So let's go with two teardrops. Again, I haven't measured them out. I haven't checked the same size at the moment because at first, it's just really for a quick, quick little look. Hmm. And then obviously we'd put a little indentation in now. I can't decide if I like it like that. Or is it? No, I do. I'm going to use it like that. But I'm going to go a little bit smaller with each one. So probably let's see size wise. What do we think? Now, and I apologize. I'm not very good at weighing things. <laughs> I go very much by eye for what I, what I like the look of. I'm just saying maybe about Malteser size pieces, I think. And then, you know, we could either stick them on round or we could do teardrop. I think probably round looks that little bit nicer than what it was before. So let's go, I mean, teardrop looks nicer than round. I just said the opposite to what I meant then, didn't I? So let's go there and that. Again, let's play around with spacing. So, because it doesn't have a face, I guess it's very difficult for you guys to kind of picture. I think this one's a little bit bigger than the other one. Let's take a bit off that. Yeah, it's difficult for you guys to picture what's in my head. And do you know what? Even if it doesn't turn out like what's in my head, I don't overly worry because you guys couldn't see what was in my head, so you don't know. <laughs> it's not the same. But yeah, have a bit of a play around. Like it actually doesn't look too bad if it's if it's fairly wide apart as well. But I think I'm gonna go closer together. But like that close together is it's too close. So I think about that and there. You might find if you got warm hands that it's fairly sticky and that it sticks itself simply just by pressing down a little bit. If you find it's not sticking on its own, you can just use a tiny bit of water just to stick that in place. So the water kind of ekes away a little bit at the uh, fondant or modeling paste, not modeling paste, fondant or sugar paste. So confused today with the names of everything. Let's just call it ready to roll icing. Ready to roll Charles. icing, yeah. So it kind of dissolves it a little bit and it, it creates its own glue. So you can use edible glue, it's absolutely fine, but you might find that you don't actually need to. So let's see what shape nostrils. We're gonna go bigger at the top. So hole near the top. And then what I want to do is try and bring it down so that it's a bit more of a teardrop shape. So let me just find my little Dresden tool. So I'm going to bring it down here and here. Yeah, that's good. So I don't I see on the photo they're everywhere, but I think I might 
and make it look silly if I put them everywhere. So let's just try and put some on here. I guess if it's cartoony, it's, it shouldn't need as many as the real life one. How long do you think you've been going now, Zoe? I don't know. I haven't been paying any attention to it. Just over half an hour. Have I already? Yes. Okay, so we've got some in. I think that's enough, don't you? Ooh, let's put in the bottom. So really anything that you're push, pushing into the paste, you want to do fairly quickly because you don't want the paste to have ages drying and then find that when you try and put all these lines and things in, it's just going to crack. So I'm going to try and put in a little bit of a mouth. We're having a closed mouth because it's going to make it easier. If we open it, you're almost going to lose all the cake that's in the middle. So it wants to be closed. So I'm just going to use the more rounded end of my dressing tool. I think we're going to bring it up to about here. So that's going to be like the highest point of my mouth. And then I'm going to bring it down slightly at either side. She's probably going to look a bit sad. I've decided she's a she. Is that because you're going to use pink dust? No, it's because she's going to have nice big eyelashes. Mm. Nice big, big eyelashes. So we're going to push that in there. So bear in mind how thick your fondant is as well. So you're only going to be able to press to a certain depth without kind of going through to your ganache or your buttercream filling. And I'm just softening the line a little bit with my finger. Did you say uh, yeah, your finger is one of your most useful tools? I do use them a lot, yeah. And I know that not everybody does um, because, well, some people don't like to have their fingers touching things at all. But for me, I have to be able to feel everything. Like if I can feel it, it's so much easier. Um, but yeah, a lot of people will kind of say, well, they've got fat fingers. So, you know, use something else. I could use like one of the rubber ended tools to draw. And like say I was using that one um, or, you know, use the end of the ball and tool a little bit if you find that easier. Really play around, you know, with tools and what's going to work best for you because everybody does have different sized fingers. So what works well for someone might not for the next person. It's a little bit uneven. Can you see just around the chin here? You can still see my silver cake board there. Again, I'm not too worried. I've got chocolate filling on absolutely everything. I'm not a very clean worker. Sorry, guys, I get, I get stuff everywhere. Everything is washed. It's not that unclean, but yeah, I do make a bit of a mess. See, it has little whiskers, but I think I'm not gonna put little actual whiskers on. Okay, so let's move on to the face itself. Now the eyes actually stick out quite a bit, don't they? Can you guys hear the rain outside? It's actually really loud in here. <laughs> With the rain. Pushing that way a little So we're gonna bit. work on this bit next, so I just want, yeah, I just want Richard to check that you guys can all see. You know, don't panic if, it, if it's not right straight away. We could keep them fairly round like that. <clears throat> Ooh, my voice is going in. Do I want them that big or not? I can't decide. Decisions. I find I'm making a decision on anything is so difficult for me. Yeah. So they look, they look weird at the moment. <clears throat> I promise. I promise they will look different. Yeah. I'm gonna go with this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press them down. I want them to kind of stick up a little bit. So I'm pressing them in in the middle because my eyeball itself is gonna go in this middle bit. I'm gonna swap to my ball end tool. And I'm gonna push a little oval in. You could go round or you could go oval. It's more trying to get them similar to each other. Now it's here, so let's just put. So just using the pointy ridge of the back of my dressing tool, I'm gonna give it some little creases. I don't want too many creases, just a couple on there. And then what we're gonna do is we'll go kind of a little bit of an oval or mini sausage shape, I guess, rather than an oval. That one's got a crack in it, so we'll just roll it again. Okay. I'm gonna push my ball and tool in at the top of each one. Okay, and I want it to kind of come down so it gets a bit smaller at the bottom like that, so we get that little teardrop shape again. Hopefully you guys can see this on here. And I know I haven't spent ages working on these. You can spend much, much longer working on its little ears. These are gonna have to have some water to attach them. I could even actually poke a hole into the cake to insert them into. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try sticking them first. If, if it feels like they're a bit heavy and a bit big to stick on their own, then what we'll do then is um, we'll poke a hole and push them into a hole. But I think it looks like it might actually be all right. It looks like it's sticking. So I'm pressing quite firmly on the back. So I squash the back of each ear down a bit. Can you still see that? Okay, I'm pressing kind of down there as well. You can use your paintbrush handle as well for a lot of things. 
a lot of the modeling let me give it a little crease kind of around the bottom of its ear on the picture i, I realize you guys can't really see the picture it looks like it's got a little little line around here it maybe doesn't actually have but <laughs> mine now has this little fatty bit at the bottom of its ear its ears look quite big now i've got them on i could have even gone smaller couldn't i it's funny when you've got things in your hand, they look really small. And then when you put them against whatever you're making, they always end up looking so much bigger. But just make sure they're not so big that the weight kind of pulls them off what you're doing. So I actually don't know if I want to go too bright. We'll go for rose because it's a little bit paler in colour. And in fact, what I'm going to do is just bring over, I was using it earlier, some kitchen roll. Because the dust gets quite messy if you drop it on your work surf surface. So it can be difficult to clean off some surfaces. So try and keep it on a piece of kitchen roll. I've put it in my brush and then dabbing off all the excess on that kitchen roll. And then we're going to put it into the ears. I've just thought, actually, I don't even know if anybody could see that bit there. Yeah, you're top down now. So we're going to put it in the middle of the ears just to give them a bit of colour. So this brush just about slots in there. Hopefully you can see that in there. Okay, and what I also want to do is make this a little bit pink around the eyes. And I could have actually gone for a more peachy pink. Just seeing if I've got more peachy one. Oh, there's a peach delight one. Let's see what this one looks like. Occasionally I put the wrong lids on the wrong powder, so it's not always what it says on the lid, but yeah, that is the peach delight one. I'm gonna mix the two together. Peach Sorry, so a bit of peach and rose it was here. And I'm gonna start by catching around the edge. So can you see when I've got a lot in my brush, it kind of drops onto everything, which can be quite difficult to then clean off. To be fair, this one, it's all right if it gets quite a bit of pink on, on its face. I don't know if you can actually see me doing the same on the Not other the side. Answer. I'm just repeating the same on the other eye. I'm going to go for the pink on its own again. And we're going to go into those nostrils. I'm going to go a little bit around the edge as well. But I want the main bit inside. And then kind of just a lighter dusting of it on there like that. Again, if you drop it anywhere, just take a big clean brush that's really nice and soft and just give it a gentle little, little dusting over. It's starting to take shape a little bit more now, actually, isn't it? I think it might actually look quite nice with a bit of pink along the edge of its lip. I'm going to go back for my bigger brush and I'm just going to catch the top one. And you can airbrush, but for me, I like to dust. It's I find it easier and a bit less messy. I do think that that's your favourite bit of cake is the dust. Yeah, it makes a big difference just putting a little bit of dust on. I mean, it's a really simple cake as this, but actually just giving it a tiny bit of dust just completely kind of changes what it looks like. Okay, maybe a tiny bit on the bottom left there. And what we can always do as well is darken that, but we'll go over with the darker colours in a bit. I could even actually add a bit of pink to its cheeks. Do you know what? I might even go brighter pink for the cheeks. So this is the strawberry one. So I don't want too much in my brush. So you must have a few people that watch you do your Facebook lives because a few people have commented about your pink dusts. Oh yeah, I like, I like to give everything pink cheeks. <laughs> so just the top of each cheek, which is kind of under the eye. Actually, this one's, this cheek on this side looks nicer because I didn't have quite as much powder in the brush. So I've got like a cleaner kind of look to it. Whereas sometimes if there's a bit too much powder in your brush in one go, it kind of leaves it a little bit patchy looking. So it's just going to be working out what size we need. So I need a piece that's going to just fit in that gap. So that's going to be way too big. Can you just bring it to you a little bit? That's it. Perfect. You guys see. So that's it. Thank you. Just roll a ball. I'm not using water or anything at first because I just want to work out the size first. It's actually not too bad size wise. In fact, I almost feel like I might even push this bottom bit in a little bit so that my eye comes over that. So can you see when you're working, you're absolutely fine to change your mind about what you're doing as well. So I'm going to roll a piece, I'm going to squash it down like this, and then we're going to slot it into that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom. So I want a nice sharp knife. Got a couple of brush related questions. Hey, yes. how do you clean your brushes from the dusts? Um, just soap and water. Uh, well, not like hand soap. So washing up liquid, sorry, and water. If Sometimes I have ones that I only ever use for pink blusher. Um, well, when I say blusher, I mean this, but 
for using it as a blusher on my figures and, and my cakes. And I kind of just rub them and then I put it back in the pot and I save that only ever for pink, but most of them, because they're getting used for different colors all the time, um, I just, I put on my kind of washing up sponge a bit of water and a bit of washing up liquid and I just rub them on the sponge. Um, if it's a pointy brush, I don't tend to use them as much for dusts though, because dusts make all your brushes kind of fray out. I mean, this one's had a point on it. <laughs> the students used it so much in the class with dusts that the bristles, can you see all went really like, I don't know how well that shows up, but it basically ruined the bristles. So I do have some good brushes like this one that I use for powders, but a lot of the ones that I use for powders are ones where I'm not bothered about them going back to a nice thin point because they always end up going everywhere. Uh, if it doesn't stick, you can put a bit of water on. So just a little bit of water in there, maybe a tiny bit more. The another, other one's stuck okay. Another question, Ruby. Do you use... I uh, can't even get a word out today. Do you use a specific type of brush for cakes, for dusting that sort of thing? Um, especially for cakes, are they just general dusting these, brushes? To be honest, these are all ones that I bought from cake places. So like these are the Sylvia Mancini ones because we, we sell these in our online shop. The Sable brushes are ones, again, we sell what we get from Culpit. So they are all kind of cake decorating ones. Yeah. These ones, again, caking it up ones. But I think... I think most of the artist ones are probably the same. They're using them purely I for think. food. Yeah, I mean, yeah, don't buy a brush, use it for acrylic paints and then use it on your cake. Like keep your brushes just for your cakes. So let's try and roll a piece that's a little bit thinner on one end and it's gonna get chunkier on top camera now. as it comes along. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put the point under the eye like that. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm actually going to swap and use my craft knife now because it's got a smaller blade. And then, because this isn't the length of it, I'm going to cut it here at an angle. Hopefully my fingers aren't too much in the way. So can you see it's come out at an angle here? And I'm going to try and put them. You can just cover the whole thing in one flat colour. But I'm going to try and dust it so I'm getting more colour on each edge and leaving the middle slightly grayer. It's quite pale as the peach actually, maybe we'll just go a bit more pink. I just want to darker in between the mouth. So can you see that on the camera? Just in this gap here. Yep. Just putting in a little bit, like you don't have to go really heavy handed with it. Just a little bit in there. So I use lots of different brushes. I mean, I have a big collection of brushes. You have hundreds of I brushes. I do have hundreds of brushes. I mean, obviously, because I teach, we have a lot of brushes for the students to use, but it does mean that when students are here, I have a big selection of things that I can choose from, which always works out well for me. You also so, have a shop behind you with... I do have a shop full of, full of stuff, so I, I sometimes just help myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a very thin bit of, or if I can, a very thin line of the black powder around the outside edge, just what so it makes the eyelid stand out a little bit more. Have I got it in shot still? Yeah, you are in shot. Cool. What were you gonna ask me? Were you gonna ask me well, something? It'd be nice to see people create this cake, won't it, after the video? Yeah, it would actually. Yeah, if you guys have a go at making this, um, if you want to share it on the Renshaw's page or tag uh, Zoe's Fancy Cakes and Renshaw's Baking, it'd be great to, to see. And if you put it on Instagram, hashtag um, Renshaw's Baking, and so is fancy cakes. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be nice because <laughs> if, if you tag us, we can reshare your work you see in our stories and things, which is always nice. Yes. Anyway, that I put a little crease basically, I'm adding this little dark bit. I could really have added a dark bit all the way around the bottom edge so it looks like it's more shadowed because it would be kind of further underneath. For that, I probably want to swap for a bigger brush. Um, but I'm just trying to see if I can show you kind of down here if I were to just darken the edge just a little bit down here so this should be easy for us to pick up because we put that cake card underneath so now we can move that onto there and I'm going to just very carefully drop that onto there so hopefully now it looks a little bit more like it's in water than it did before hopefully so if I roll a nice thin right, bit changing camera. okay you change camera so that we can just put it around the edge then it kind of looks like the edge of the water so we can do this in pieces all the way around. You could do actually one big long piece. I should have just done one big, big long piece, shouldn't I? Your time check, you've been going one hour and five minutes. Have I? Oh, it's longer than I thought it was going to be going for. 
You say that every time we do a live. No, I don't. Sometimes yeah, I manage do. it fairly quickly. So really, you could just do it in one long piece. It's fine. And you don't even have to go all the way around the edge. But if, if you're worried, it looks a bit untidy around the edge. I should have really done that in one long piece. But it's okay. And then we can do extras that are like little ripples. And you can use, if you struggle to roll a piece like this, um, and it's getting a bit lumpy bumpy because your fingers, like mine is, you can use a cake smoother to roll it out with as well. That's That works well. So let's put this on here. Put your head. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna put that around there. So I'm just kind of covering the edge. It would have actually looked nicer if I'd have just put it on as one piece rather than several individual pieces. Yeah. Took that down there a little bit and overlap it. Could smooth it out, but I don't think I'm gonna get a very smooth, smooth join. Okay, so let's just do a couple of extra ones. So it looks like little ripples coming out so the hippo looks like it's just come out of the water so if we roll some more pieces and we just kind of lay them on here so if they don't stick on their own you can put a little bit of water underneath and let's go slightly smaller on this side maybe get another one just coming out off the side of it I think what were the animal cakes you made recently? I did a panda the other day. Oh, there you go. Did a panda. I'm wondering if I can make it look like it's got a little air bubble coming up. Right, I'm gonna win. This is when really I should be stopping and I can just keep going and keep going. You can just keep going. I'm just trying to put little bits of white on so it looks a bit more like, um, like a bubble or something coming up to the, to the surface. So it looks like light kind of reflecting on it, maybe. Oops, I might have, oh, I always knock them over. You maybe want a little bit on the tops of some of these as well. You could even, you could just keep this as dry powder, but I thought it would look nicer if I just did it in white, because I thought if I put the powder on, I'll drop the powder onto everything with these bits. Like I say, oops, you can spend much longer than I have done getting it nice and neat. I feel like she needs a pink bow. Did you say they could use glaze as well? If you wanted to make something shiny, you could use yeah. the edible glaze. Yeah, there's the... I used that the other day to make something look like wet like water. Yeah. I think it's quite bitter tasting, but um, it does look good. So, like, I would probably maybe put it on the water. I won't today. Really? Um, so, if you're going to use the glaze, it is nice, but get yourself the glaze cleaner that goes with it because it's quite difficult to get out with your brushes, if not. It's like varnish, isn't it, the cakes? Yeah, edible varnish. Well, edible varnish. Yeah. Does it need anything else? Are we okay? Uh, Does it look all right? Good. Can you bring it down close to the camera? And then we'll go from the other angle. Can you see it there? Yeah. It's off to the side of it. Yeah, perfect. Can you guys see it okay? But really, I should finish it off with a ribbon around the board. I realise that I haven't done that at the moment, but a nice little ribbon. Probably pink ribbon would go nice on that, I think. Um, it's probably not the best cake in the world, but we didn't spend very long decorating it, so... I think that's it. Yeah, so I mean, if you guys have got any questions you want to ask me before we disappear, <laughs> feel free to ask. Thank you. And don't forget, if you guys have a go at making one, um, give myself a tag, give French Rose Baking a tag, and then we can share it on our pages and things. In fact, if you want to share it on the French Rose Baking page as well, you can pop that on the French Rose Baking page. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching, guys, and putting up with me for over an hour. <laughs>